Today we're going to be doing a glasses case, mainly because I need one. And this is what I had in mind. I thought of doing a composite piece with a kind of padauk inlay, and this is black walnut. I'm going to use friction centers this time because this is going to be a bit of skew chisel practice for me as well. So let's see how we go. So I don't know if you can see that, <coughs> there's a slight gap here with the, where the glue is or not is. Um, but I'm thinking because I want to take this down slightly lower than this, I might get away with it. By the way, this is black walnut and I don't know what it's called, black walnut, because it's not black really. Um, and padauk, padauk, uh, however you want to pronounce it. Um, so I'm hoping that this could be quite pretty. We'll see how we go. If you're wondering what these are, these are really nice matched pair friction drives and they purposely don't have any teeth in them. So if you are trying to learn the skew chisel, for instance, or any other tool, uh, if you get a catch, the piece just stops dead. The other reason I use them is because this stuff, this product seems to be quite brittle. So if you get a catch, it can be like devastating to it. So I figured if I had it on a friction mount, then if it catches, then it should be okay. But so far, so good. That's a bit better. It's hard doing this whether you need your glasses on your face. And when you've got a mask on, it's quite difficult. So, kind of there. So, <clears throat> I need to leave some kind of tenon in there. We might have to do just one bead on the lid because otherwise, I'm not going to be able to leave a tenon in, uh, not be able to leave a tenon on the lid to fit in the base so i reckon we need to be somewhere there somewhere there Flea, i reckon about 25 millimeters Okay, I think I'm going to part it off 
right underneath this collar and then chuck them up I reckon. That's a good example of a very useful feature of a uh, friction tailstock and drive centre. Well, it's the day after. <laughs> uh, what had happened is that the glue had started pulling away from this laminate here and it's still not perfect. But hopefully when it's polished and waxed up, that won't be too visible. And I've re-glued it and it seems to have set properly. This weather at the moment is so cold and damp. I think that it's just affecting glue setting times and I'd completely underestimated how long it would take. So. Part this off to its final length and then uh, we can start trying to turn it over on the end. I put some tape on here for obvious reasons. It's not as tight a fit as I maybe would have liked so that's uh, just to hold it steady. Ugh, look at that great big catch. <sighs> I'm trying to use the skew as much as I can because uh, if you don't use it, you just never learn it and uh, clearly need a lot more practice, but it's getting there slowly. But look at that one little catch and off it goes. But let's just take that out. We should have enough material there to be able to do that.
That is the hardest cut with a skewer apparently. And uh, I can confirm that's true. <laughs> Thing is, if you lose the bevel, that's when you get the skate back. So it's keeping the bevel on the on the wood at all times, which is actually where you get this shiny finish because you're not actually it's cutting it's cutting the grain nicely, cutting the fibres nicely, but it's actually burnishing them, which is why you get this incredibly smooth finish. Right, it's just <laughs> it's just about okay. It's about four millimeters, maybe three millimeters thick. So um, I'm going to take this down to the same size but I'm going to stop slightly short because I'm bound to get some sort of run back on this end when I do it. I was just about to uh, chuck this up the other way around and then I remembered I haven't I need to finish this because this is the last time we're going to be able to touch this. I think the first thing to do is to just tidy up that end where the tailstock is which I'm going to do with sandpaper I think. Tell you if you've never tried this foam, this set of foam backed, this uh, fabric backed sandpaper, I just love it. It's amazing stuff. I put a little bit of tape on just on the ridge, just for a bit of optimistic assistance. probably shouldn't use this image as the uh, thumbnail because people might get sick. <laughs> it might give the wrong idea as to what the video is about or maybe that's a good way of getting views I don't know. <laughs> Capture boxes always have a kind of slightly bizarre looking uh, um, operation about them. Oh look at that. I really need to tidy up in here. It's a right old mess. So is when you don't get very much time each time to come out and play you kind of do the things you want to do rather than all the things that you should do. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Let's see what we have. Oh, that's pretty. Walnut and um, padak, padauk, padik, whatever you want to call it. Mm, that was better. It's, um... That was a little bit better than the first one, wasn't it? Right. Sanding. Sanding, sanding, sanding.
I'm going to leave the bottom flat because it's quite nice to be able to stand it up on its end. It's not a bug, it's a feature. I caught the uh, I caught the uh, edge of the tool rest on it when it was going round, which is why you should never adjust your tool rest whilst the workpiece is spinning. But we're going to make it into something. There you are, now it's art. Makes you wonder, doesn't it, how many features you see on uh, pieces that are made by the professionals who are really good, and you wonder if any of them are actually there because they were mistakes. I'm sure it is absolutely the case. Let me know if you've ever uh, added some nice designs to your pieces because actually it was a mistake that you couldn't really get rid of or couldn't be bothered to get rid of. Let me know in the comments. We've got to be run. It's got to be lots of people that's had that happen. I think it was Rick, Rick from Rick Turns. Who I love to watch. If you don't, if you don't know him, look him up. He's brilliant. Uh, I think he said, maybe it was Sam Angelo. I'm not sure. That uh, for making a bowl, it. No, oh no, hang on. It wasn't either of those two. It was the lovely Phil Anderson, that was it. He said, if, uh, if you're making a bowl or anything like that, if, it, if it'll hold your soup, it's a bowl. Uh, if it won't hold your soup, it's art. I like that a lot. Yes, it was definitely Phil Anderson. Shady Acres were turning. Look him up if you haven't already. Absolutely wonderful, lovely, lovely man. And Papa 1947. Gary, if you're watching, you've inspired me a great deal to do a lot of the things that I've tried, which I never would have tried had I not seen uh, your amazing instructions. Look him up to so many good ones out there. One day I hope to be one, but you never know. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm doing a video a week and I cover all sorts of different wood turning ideas and it's going to fall off in a minute. Stay. And uh, it would be really nice to have you on board and build up the community. Take care. Bye.